networking is, is, is priceless. So many of the people that I worked with here at Royal are also now firefighters. You're in an interview and you, you, know, you ask your interview, what kind of problems do you have and how do you envision actually changing it? That right there will set you apart. I uh, went to college, finished college, came back home and became a bartender because that's just what you do after college. Um, and there was a while where a lot of my customers were firefighters, were paramedics, were something in EMS. And eventually I got convinced, come do some ride-alongs, you went to college, what are you doing behind the bar? Um, so I did a couple ride-alongs with Oakland Fire and I loved it. I, every second over there was, I had so much fun. Um, so I ended up doing EMT, went through EMT. I had to do it twice because I was a bartender, <laughs> so it took me a while to get it together. Um, got my EMT, came to work for Royal. While I was at Royal, I was still kind of in that fire path. Um, so I did a Firefighter One Academy, had a blast, but it made me realize I don't want to be a firefighter. But I was really, I was getting more into the EMS side of things. Um, so then I went to medic school after that and did medic school, I was still here at Royal, uh, left Royal because I got a job at Paramex Plus and then during my time in medic school I applied for the San Francisco Fire Department, um, continued my life, totally forgot that I applied for the department. Three years later I got a call saying, hey, do you still want this job? And you see what my answer was. Yeah. Derek. So my name is Derek. Um, so at the time, back in like 2011, 2013 or so, I was actually dancing, believe it or not. I was a competitive dancer for three years and uh, I was doing that while I was going through school. So my journey was a little bit different. I kind of had like, uh, you know, my own thing, like kind of Sukai, I was kind of doing that and uh, I just wanted something more. I'd always played sports my whole life. Uh, a lot of firefighters come in with the sporting background and um, I was actually an Eagle Scout when I was younger. So I kind of had this like, uh, you, know, you know, work and service towards the community. Like I had been exposed to that early. And I was like, why not the fire service? Like it might be a really good fit for me. I remember I, I didn't know anybody or anything. Couldn't tell you what a blood pressure was or like any of that. Like I was literally kind of starting from the, uh, the beginning. Called a local fire station, Station 28, Alameda County, right down the street from where I live uh, in Newark. And uh, I remember just walking in there. I was like, hey, you know, what is this? You know, like I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Like, you know, what is this all about? And they were like, you know, maybe you should go get educated. And at the time, I just got out of San Jose State. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, you know, maybe you, should, you know, like, maybe you should, like, you know, look into fire science classes and that kind of thing. And they were like, kick you, like, get out the door, dude, who are you, you know? So literally, I just graduated from San Jose State um, and I applied to Chabot, like, the next day. Classes started a week later. And so I was doing that. Um, I actually got my EMT done that summer and applied to Royal. Um, so Royal really gave me a home and it was like that first sort of like EMS job. Super pumped to be here. Um, I did that while I was going through medic school um, over at Foothill College. Um, as soon as I got done with that, I went over across the uh, freeway towards Paramedics Plus. I went through their upgrade academy, became a medic there. And at the time I was also doing Chabot's Fire Academy. Um, and uh, I worked up at Cordelia, Cordelia Fire Protection District near Vacaville Vallejo Fairfield. Um, really good program out there. You work one 24-hour shift a week. Give you some experience to be on the nozzle, man. I was pumped. I was like, let's go, you know? So, um, yeah, I was doing that up until the point I got the call uh, to go to uh, Foster City Fire, where I currently work. Love it. Uh, been on shift there uh, since April of last year, and I'll be off probation October 10th of this year. So happy to be here. So how long did it take you to get hired from when you actually Four applied? years and 31 days to the day. <laughs> yeah. So... All right, Eric. Um, what's up, guys? My name's Eric. Uh, so, 2008, I uh, graduated high school, uh, 17 years old, not really knowing what, to, what I wanted to do. So I went to, uh, I went to East Bay, actually filled all my classes for a quarter, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, right? And once it is, once you find out what it is you want to do, you hit the ground running. So I was lucky enough, my godfather is a Hayward firefighter. So he said, come on, do a ride along. And it's a little bit cliche -ish, like, oh, you know, I just did a ride along and it was awesome, but it truly is, it truly is what, what inspired so many people. And uh, from that point on, I, I, t I took fall, some, uh, fall, spring, summer. I went to summer school for three years. I made sure I got my, my two AAs in fire science, fire protection, uh, fire prevention. From there, I, like, 
I, grad, I got done with my degree uh, on a Monday. On Tuesday, I started the Royal Academy. Um, and then from there, a month and a half later, I started paramedic school. And it was like I was, on, I was still on FTO, and I was doing my paramedic school. And, uh, you know, from there on, a year and a half later, I got hired. So things happen really quickly once you buckle down and you focus on what you want to do. So uh, from, the, from the time that I started, uh, I got hired at 23, seven, from, from what it feels like, like seven years, you know, and you're always thinking about it. You're always thinking about the next step and you're always doing 110% in, in everything. Um, so it feels like much longer, but I, I was able to accomplish it in, in, a, in a little bit amount of time. So that's kind of where I am. So I've been in Oakland now for three and a half years, uh, Station 20, and um, yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Angela. Hi, uh, Angelo Manalo, uh, San Francisco Fire. Um, my journey, I love my journey. My, the journey is probably one of the best parts about this process. It kind of, um, I look back on it now and it was, um, it was probably the best thing that I've been through. Um, I uh, grew up in San Francisco and uh, I went to City College of SF and College of San Mateo. Uh, I did my general ed and my fire science and EMT. Um, then I transferred to uh, UC Davis, uh, thinking I was going to do the resident firefighter program there. Um, but I ended up not uh, doing that and getting interested in other things that uh, college has to offer. Um, and then right when I graduated, the economy was uh, terrible. It was 2008. Uh, I couldn't get a job. Um, I decided you know, I was going to um, see what I could pursue in EMS uh, in the meantime while uh, I was waiting to uh, apply for fire, or actually I'd been applying since I was 18. Um, I took tests up and down the West Coast, um, Seattle, LA, San Jose, um, just getting experience uh, interviewing and applying and taking tests. And um, I took a test um, right around the time I started working here for San Francisco, um, my dream department. And um, I scored pretty well there. I actually got the results while I was working here on the ambulance. Someone called me and said, hey, you scored really well. Um, so that was in 2009, I think. And uh, I had a great time working here at Royal. Um, I was actually able to go through paramedic school while I was working here from 2009 to 11. Um, I was an FTO here. Um, and. Uh, after that, uh, I did my internship for paramedic school. And right around that time when I was finishing that, um, I got the letter for San Francisco. And um, I completed my time here at Royal, my internship, and started the academy uh, seven years ago this week. So um, all in all, the, jour the journey was about eight years total because I took my first test when I was 18, and I got hired when I was 26. And uh, those were probably the best years of my life, like just going through this process and uh, learning the job, learning like uh, interpersonal skills, um, making friends in uh, EMS and fire. So uh, that was my journey, and I'm uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Miles. Hey, everyone. Miles as well. Well, not as well, but <laughs> she introduced me, all right. Uh, you know, there's a common theme that I've seen, and it's like everyone's got their own very unique and, and crazy journey, whether it's through, you know, an incident in someone's life or trials and tribulations or a really good ride along, whatever it may be. Maybe you have, you're part of a legacy with a bunch of, uh, you know, fire personnel within your family or, or whatever. Uh, mine started, um, I was a career carpenter at one time, uh, so I started in my, my early 20s uh, for all this, and all it took was uh, basically the, a large house fire that, you know, actually happened to me with it, I was in it. Um, and so long story short, lost half my house is down in Santa Cruz, and when the fire crews actually came up and basically mitigated this, like, you know, the worst, you know, what we deal with, what all of us deal with, is potentially with, you know, someone having the worst day of their life, right? And so this was like one of my, this was like bad news bears for me. 
And so they came up, they totally slayed this thing. And at that moment, I was like, wow, like, this is like the most also like worst, worst time in your life, full spectrum, like best time in your life. You're like, wow, I'm so overloaded with gratitude. And you're like, I want to do that job. So at 22, literally the day after this, after they basically my house was red taped and no one could live there, uh, I signed up for junior college and went to school for EMT, which I had no idea even what, I was like, what, is that like a throat doctor or something? <laughs> and um, so I ended up, I signed up for that and that was through uh, Cabrillo College down in, uh, down in Aptos. And I had one friend who was in Cal Fire at the time and her name's Jody Gear. She, literally like total bat, She's, she's awesome. <laughs> Try to keep this as PG as I can. Um, so total, like, she's rad. So she talked me throughout this entire process. Um, ended up getting my EMT. Had it for a couple of years, but I was still doing construction at the time. Then I had an opportunity to move up north, which is basically the East Bay area after I got back from uh, living, spend some time in a different country. And uh, then at that point, I was like, you know what, I'm going to reinvest in this whole thing because I was like, just not really too content where I was at. Um, and I wanted to, to, to reinvest, my, my, reinvest myself into, you know, this, this thing that I knew that I had so much, you know, passion about. So I ended up getting a job actually right by Derek's uh, city. So Foster City, I ended up getting a job down there. I was down there for roughly about a year and then um, ended up taking a hiatus because I had done some other medical training um, that I didn't really utilize. And then at that point, I got back into the restaurant industry, which I did for an exorbitant amount of time in my life, which is, you know, a, a, a really, really good thing to do. It teaches you a lot about people and basically how to keep your mouth shut. Um, and uh, so I ended up, um, at that point, I went back to school and uh, went to Chabot College, finished their AA program, which was totally stellar, highly recommended. Did their Firefighter One, um, ended up, in that time, um, started reinvesting myself. I was thinking about nursing, so I started doing prereqs for that. Well, my buddy asked me, he was like, hey man, like we've already hit our prereqs for, for medic school. And I was like, ah, you know, like, well, we'll see what happens. So I ended up applying for medic school and got in. And um, so, but from day one, that's when it like rejuvenated that whole like first impression of what I had with like the fire service. And I was like, holy God, like I'm, I'm all in on this. Um, so ended up finishing medic school and um, during my internship, during all that time, I was actually working here in Royal, totally like revamped, um, you know, my schedule to allow things to be well balanced and to also give me enough time in case I need it as like an emergency kind of like ace card, be like, hey, I really need this day off because I got this big stuff coming up. And, um, and they, they really facilitated, you know, a lot of my success. So I ended up, um, yeah, I finished up my, my medic and at that time I basically told Royal, I was like, hey, you know, I really want to be a working paramedic. So um, basically I started kind of a phase out and ended up getting hired with Paramedics Plus. And it was the, basically the day I got hired was basic, basically the day I quit here. And um, I still work for them going on, I think it's going to be three years this year as a part-time paramedic working in the system around here. And uh, I was on with them for about a year and a half and um, ended up getting picked up with Alco. And one of the things, I was a, a reserve firefighter with them and I got, I got picked up with them after I had the worst. So I've, a, I've tested with one department and that's Alco. And I've taken two tests with them. But I, the thing is I, I knew that if I was gonna get hired, I don't speak other languages. I don't know American Sign Language. You know, um, so I knew that I needed to be a paramedic and I needed some amount of fire experience. So I was applying for Cal Fire, but I didn't have the, uh, the time sanctions in the summertime because I really like going to the beach. <laughs> and uh, um, so I ended up, uh, I got hired with them after the worst, worst interview of my life. Worst panel. Like you got, like imagine this and you're sitting in front and you're just, it's like one of those like Kit Kat moments where you're like, you know, you want to break it and just stop time and basically run out the door. <laughs> Um, so I ended up leaving that and I was like, wow, I never knew what a fire interview was all about. I was like, you know, you could research stuff on the internet, but no, it was like more of stuff that's like real world, you know, where you actually have to think for yourself. Um, so, uh, I was with a reserve here in County for about three years and 
they ended up uh, applying as a paid side and I got picked up and the mo second most amazing time of my life is actually getting a call from the chief offering you a job. And I was driving, I was doing a transport down Broadway in Oakland when I got that call. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty emotionally overwhelming. Um, so I've been on, I'm a probationary firefighter uh, for about a year and a half now. Um, we have a two year probation. And um, so it's, we'll, we'll touch more on the whole probationary side at a different, a little bit later in this. But, um, you know, it's, it's been an incredible, incredible journey, you know, and very unique to every one of you. And, um, you know, use us from here on, we'll use us as that resource. And um, we'll tell you all the, all the good and bad about what to do, what not to do, and just kind of do our, do our best to guide you. Uh, but thanks for having all of us here. This is pretty epic. And um, yeah. Anyway. So Miles, how long did it take actually from beginning to end to get hired? Uh, 22, uh, nine years from, because uh, I was 22 and then spent, I did like a two and a half year hiatus. So mm -hmm. probably about six, six and a half years. I would have started when I was younger. I wish, um, I wish I had it together when I was younger, like Mr. Esparza over here. I feel like it took me a long time to kind of get it together and get my mind right on, okay, you're a grown up now, it's time to do grown up things. Um, so that's when I would be a grown up sooner. Um, and then I would also get out there a little bit earlier, just kind of do ride alongs earlier, um, meet people earlier, stop by stations and just kind of say hi can I hang out with you guys for a little bit? I would do all that stuff earlier. Um, I, because I, I feel like I would have found out this isn't really for you. You don't really want to be a firefighter. It's, it's fun. I had a lot of fun, like I said, during the, the ride-alongs that I did. But um, it wasn't until I was in, like, in the Firefighter One program and was actually doing the long, the full like 24-hour shift ride-alongs that I was like, oh, I don't, this isn't really, this like living on the fire life isn't really for me. I don't, having my boss right there in the room next to me isn't really for me. And I, I kind of like the freedom of being on the ambulance. Um, yeah, so I guess just starting when I was younger and doing what, um, I don't remember which one you said it, but just kind of buckling down and getting to the hard work earlier in life. Kind of tailoring off uh, Sukai, um, I guess really, you know, how many of you guys have like families in here? You know, like kids or like a wife or a spouse or like people, you know? I mean, so, so no, no, but I mean like, no, so it's important, right? So like, I mean, just really when you, when you talk about like staying focused and channeling that, like it's really important that everybody in your immediate support system and social circle, including your friends, like they understand what it is that you want and what it is that you want most, you know? Like applying has to be up there with, you know, your highest priority right now. And I mean, it's like, it's kind of like one of those things, like I wish if I was like brand new, somebody coming in, I wish somebody would have been like, man, you should apply today, like right now. Like you're never, there's never gonna be a point in which you're like ready to like sort of do something. You just sort of have to do it. And uh, you kind of figure it out as you go. Um, you know, I remember I was nervous when I started medic school, but it was okay. You know, I was nervous when I went into clinicals, but it wound up being okay. And it was like the same thing, like almost every step, every phase, I was a little bit nervous and hesitant. And like, man, if I could drive that home for you guys, it's like, if you meet the minimum qualifications, you need to be applying today. Like without question, without hesitation, you know? Um, and it needs to be your top priority. And I think once you kind of like have that framework and that mindset, everything else starts sort of like lining up and getting into place. You know, it's like, you, instead of like, oh, I'll get to that application like next week, closer to the deadline, it's like, no, I'm taking care of it tonight. You know, little things like that. I mean, I think just coming from the right framework, um, because I was like, no, I'm not ready, man. I, I, I want to go do this, this first, and that first, and this thing. And it's like, if you meet the minimum, I would say you're you are overqualified, and you should more than, more than apply. Um, I don't know if you guys might you know, agree with that, but um, you know, worst they can do is say like, thanks, but no thanks. And you're like, cool, I'm better prepared for the next one. So you definitely need to figure out and distinguish what's productive and what's actually gonna get you from point A to point B. 
as opposed to what's keeping you busy, if that makes any, any kind of sense. So like there's things that you need to do every day to, to, to get better, right? To practice your interview questions, coming up with those stories and writing things down and what it is that you want to, what it is that you're going to say, that's hard work. It's not easy. And being able to distinguish that hard work, you know, some, somebody might say, oh man, I'm doing everything I can, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm researching this and researching that. Well, that's, that's awesome. You're validating the fact that you want to be a, a firefighter, or, you know, be in the fire service. But you're not really, that's not really getting you to where you want to be. What you need to be doing is focusing on yourself. And as soon as you understand that behavior and understanding that just because you're busy doesn't mean you're getting to where you need to be, you know, focus on what's actually going to make traction, what's going to help you get there. And, and that's, it's one of the hardest things because there's a lot of fluff you could do. I mean, you could read a book, you could read the newest, you know, you could, oh man, you know, I just got this book, you know, from, from, last, from last month, it's awesome. That's, that's great, but at the same time, you have a test next month, how are you preparing for that? Like, what's gonna actually gonna get you past the, past the test, get you to the interview? You know, have you practiced the questions? Have you, ta have you talked to people and see what kind of questions they've been getting and then focusing on those questions, especially if you know somebody through the department? You know, differentiating yourself between what's busy and what's productive, that's, it's gonna be, it's huge. That's very, I, I think that's one of the biggest things is like, stop wasting your time doing little things that you think is productive and, 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 and get to it, get to the hard work. Um, I believe that when I worked here, I definitely like laid the foundation for like the good habits and behaviors I have now in my career. And I think one of the big things of in that uh, regard is like taking pride and ownership in your job and um, paying attention to detail, things like that. Like whether, you know, you get, get in a little early so you can detail the ambulance, uh, go, go over like every piece of equipment you have, um, you know, come in with your boots polished, um, your shirt pressed, like little things like that I feel like really allow me to come into work every day feeling refreshed and uh, proud of um, how I've gotten to this point. Like I'm able to look in the mirror and think, wow, I'm being like the best I can be today. Um, working here, I was really able to develop that. Like um, just little things like, uh, um, like making sure like e I was ready for anything to happen and that, you know, little things I would do would, you know, might reflect um, how I operate as an EMT or as a firefighter. Like maybe I'm not always saving lives and pulling people out of, uh, you know, car wrecks or, you know, because sometimes when you're on the ambulance, things happen like that, right? Like you, you walk up on something that happens. Well, maybe I'm not always the first on scene, but maybe my behaviors and habits reflect that I'm ready to be that good, solid EMT that I've been trained to do. Like, same thing at the firehouse. Like, maybe um, I'm not always fighting fires and doing the glory work, but maybe how I sweep and mop the floors and how I, you know, make the beds and um, prepare my meals, like, reflects on how I would operate in a stressful situation to my other uh, coworkers and family. Um, another thing that I really um, developed here uh, was my patient care, you know, my empathy and having compassion for other people. Like, I look back on that and, you know, I'm on an engine now. So my, my time on scene with a patient is very limited. Like, I'm there, I try to fix the problem, like, right when I'm there and within minutes, you know, like Sukai and her crew will show up and take over and do all the hard work. Like, but uh, we, you know, we really like, here at Royal, like I really miss like being able to talk to patients and um, connect with them. Um, that's, that's something that's huge. Like you can't, like this is the best opportunity to learn that. Like you can only learn that by doing it. And, um, the patients you come into contact with here are some of the sickest you'll, you'll ever come across in your career. And being able to empathize with them and understand their bodies and their needs and what's going on with them is going to lay the foundation for what kind of 
uh, provider you are as a firefighter, paramedic, in your, your whole career. So like it's, the time is now to develop those good skills and habits. Well, I uh, pre prepared for it by actually just kind of jumping into one and not really understanding what I was doing, not knowing what to do with your hands, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and by doing that, I, so what I would have done different was actually talk to people in different classes, gone on ride-alongs, hey, you know what? And by classes, I mean uh, former um, graduating classes. What kind of interview questions did you have? Did they ask you like why you want to be a firefighter? How many truck companies are in Alco? You know how you know it's like they don't really because all that stuff's on the internet. You, they the expectation is already there that you you would have at least done that very basic level of research. It's more of the interview question. I remember it still today. It's name a time you had diversity in the workplace. What was the issue and how did you overcome it? And that was my Twix moment. That was when I was like, I have no idea. I was like, you know, you just kind of make something up and you're like, well, uh, there's always next time, you know. Um, but after that, um, you know, I ended up doing a lot better with kind of more like you look at the department, not as, you know, what it physically has, but more of the philosophy behind it. You know, what, what kind of demographics do you have? Like what counties does it spread? You know, and what inherent hazards do you, you know, things you could bring up. Then you're looking at like fiscal, you know, what they have, what, what they're looking to get, and ways to actually make it better. You know, if you're in an interview and you, you know, you ask your interview, what kind of problems do you have and how do you envision actually changing it? That right there will set you apart from basically anyone else. And another thing I really like all the responses with, you know, the, the one thing, every time you come to work, be prepared for everything, right? But come to work like every day is the first day of your career and make that first impression every single time. You know, have your, have your boots polished, have your uniforms pressed, be shaved, get enough sleep, show up early. Um, you know, if you're, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. If anyone's ever heard that, it's like basically drilled in my head at this point. Um, but honestly, talking to other uh, members of the department and seeing what kind of interview questions they really have because you know unless they change they all have kind of a set genre um, and you'll have typically on the interview panel that I had you'll have some brass and then you also have like a regular civilian so they have some HR questions so they want to know that yeah you know how to do this but you also they also want to make sure that um, you know you can you have you know how to empathize and be a part of the public not saying that those two are disconnected, but um, you know, it's a whole, it's a lot of different perspectives of the single question. It's like in an assessment where, hey, you know, what day of the week it is. Well, I don't know what it is, but you ask what year. Hey, who's the president? You ask other orientation questions, and then you realize, hey, they are oriented. They just don't know what day it is because they overslept. So you know, it's just about understanding like the full kind of perspective of each question. And that's about by you know asking other individuals you know what kind of questions that they had, or if you're in a group of people that are being interviewed, ask the ones that literally just went in, and then um, and then you know make your your connections because you know when you actually do your ride-alongs and whatnot, a lot of those members of that department may also actually be on the the interview panel. And for one, every time I go into an interview, I'm pretty st stressed. My hands get like super sweaty. Um, but when you actually see someone on the other side that you're like, hey, I know that guy is really cool. And even though he's like giving you a super stern look, you're like, hey, he's actually pretty funny. So already your tension's going down. It's going to help a little bit. So uh, be prepared, ask questions, do a little bit of research on the department, understand like the philosophy of it. And then last, um, tailor the philosophy of that department to things in your own life that would help reflect why you'd be a good puzzle fit for that, that little puzzle that they got going on. If there was like one question, I remember like, you know, kind of like, how do you approach that? It's like, you know, what is like your biggest weakness? Or like, what is, uh, like, tell me about a time where you gave like a subpar service or something like, you know, they're, they're kind of like trying to throw that out there. Like, well, how do you approach that? You know what I mean? Like, if you're pretty new to interviews, it's kind of like, well, what are they really trying to get out here? Um, you know, I think everything needs to be spun in a positive way. And so I would try and take something positive and see how maybe that could be considered like challenging and there could be negatives to that. For example, one, one of my responses would be like, well, you know, 
and this is true for me, it may not be true for you, but like sometimes when you say yes a lot and you're a go-getter and you wanna take on a lot of things at the same time, well, sometimes you can spread yourself too thin, you know, and that could be a subpar service or something like that. You're not doing like that, that due diligence to give your all to one particular thing, but you're actually spread between a lot of things. So it's kind of like, you know, figuring out how to like approach questions like that as, as opposed to like maybe saying, you know, probably like me, I put my foot in my mouth at some point, like, well, you know, maybe I showed up late one time or something like that. It's like, you know, you got to be kind of able to see what they're trying to ask and what they're trying to get at and then kind of spin it in a way that's true for you. I, I disagree. I, I say if you have the opportunity to apply, apply. You, I mean, I feel like everybody in here probably knows it's not like, Oh, Oakland Fire hiring every day. No, it's how I mean, how often? Every couple years or so, whatever. Shoot your shot. When you have that opportunity, I say go for it. Um, even I think Derek was saying, even if you don't feel ready, just try it. Like he said, you're never going to be ready. Also, it's not like you apply and tomorrow they're going to call and say, hey, the job's yours. It, you're going to have time. So put in that application, go to that interview, take that test if it's your dream department or not. Um, and then on top of that, even if it's not your dream department, go for it. Put in that application, go through that interview, because that's practice, and then you learn it'll make you better for that dream department. Networking is, is, is priceless. It really, it, it really, it's huge. Yeah. So, but you have to put yourself out there. If you're not comfortable with yourself to put yourself out there, networking is very, very challenging. Um, I went to Chabot College and I did the Firefighter One Academy, and then I did the uh, Ride Along program at Chabot College. And the the coordinator between Oakland and Chabot is Captain Salgado. I never met him before. He didn't. He never knew me. I sat in class with 20 other people, and they gave us our assignment and said, "This is your, this is where you go." That he's become. He's probably the reason, if not the biggest reason, I got hired because I reached out to him a few weeks later and said, hey, you don't know me, I don't know you, but I'm in this program and I, I saw you, I saw you see me see you. <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's like, I know you know who I am. No, he knew that I know who he was. <laughs> and it was one of those things where I put myself out there and said, hey, I wanna meet you, I have, I'm doing this, this, and this. I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody in the department. I know my shift. Can you please help me? And he said, okay, meet me at this time, Franco Gabo Plaza, one o'clock. And I was there. And I brought up my resume, I brought up everything that I was doing. I was going to med school, I was here, I was coaching. And he said, okay, I'm gonna check in with you every two weeks. And we talked every two weeks. When I was in med school, I, I called him and I said, hey, I'm looking for an internship for my clinicals. I don't know anybody, can you help me? Two weeks later, I get a call from, from the, a, who's now a captain and Oakland Fire Department, she gave me my clinicals. The day after I finished my didactic, I got in, in Kaiser Oakland because of him. When I did the whole interview process, I went through him three times. Every time I took ice cream, whipped cream sprinkles, I brought him the whole deal because I knew he was helping me a lot. <laughs> he was giving me some invaluable, I knew he wasn't giving it to nobody else. Everything, every time I went down there, he was giving me this crazy experience. So I would sh shoot my you know, interview, interview answers and he would always tell me how to rephrase things. Like I was telling you earlier, I was coaching uh, a middle school uh, soccer team between middle, uh, between middle school and high school and I called it an after school program. Well, he said, hey, why don't you take a step back and call it a, a youth development program to help teach values to, and, and help mentor young kids in, within the inner city community. <laughs> <laughs> like I, was, I would have never come up with that, you know? I would have never thought of that. But he, but he helped me. So if you don't put yourself out there, you know, even, and then after that, my, my paramedic internship, I called him out of the blue. I didn't know who he was. He didn't know me, that's for sure. I didn't know who he was. He was in Vacaville. I, I've never been in Vacaville, but I called him. I went, I went, I went and did an interview to, uh, with him. I talked to his crew. I, I hung out for 12 hours with this crew. I never even met him. I was like, man, I, in my head, I'm like, I thought this was gonna be like a two hour thing. Like I was gonna say hi, bring him ice cream. If he likes me, cool. If not, you know, I have to, I have to, I have to keep thinking forward. I spent 12, 12 hours there, lunch and dinner. And then after dinner, he said, look, my crew likes you. It seems like you're a good guy. If they didn't like you, I wouldn't like you. 
So <laughs> welcome aboard. And I'm telling you, cold calling is, has you know, changed my life, both in Oakland with my internship. And I'm telling you, networking is, I have people still, like even after I got hired a year and a half later, people still didn't have their clinicals uh, set up for my class for my didactic. But because I was out there and I was able to network, it's huge. It's by far the biggest thing you can do. What do you say when you're doing a cold call? I'm Eric and... Yeah, hey, you know what? I, I'm, my name's Eric. I, I, I currently work here. I'm going to school here. You know, I want to be, I want to be a firefighter. Uh, this is currently what I'm doing so that they know, like, okay, like, this is somebody who's actually taking the steps forward. He's not just calling me and has no clue about what he's getting into. Hey, I'm, I'm currently doing this. I'm currently in this program. You know, I'm going to finish didactic at this, at, on, on this day. Currently, I'm almost doing my internships. You know, I'm doing this internship at Kaiser Oakland. Uh, I'm looking for the next step. I'm looking for a, a, a new opportunity. And, of course, I showed up, you know, dressed, uh, semi-professional semi with the and I was, I was a ride-along on the box, but definitely giving, giving, showing that you actually are doing something along the ways of getting you there. Like uh, Captain Gasset, one of the captains in the department, I told him about, I told him about uh, helping with, with the Bay EMT program, one of the academies. But when I went up to him, I said, hey, I want to help you just to let you know I'm doing this class and this class. I'm also doing my uh, instructor 1A, 1B, 1C. When I'm done, I just want to you know, stay in touch with you so that you know that I'm, do I'm doing these things because I want to be able to help you. So I know I can't do it right now, but I just want to put it in your ear that I'm doing these things because I want to help you at some point. And if you show that interest and if you keep coming back and say, hey, check in with me in, in a month, and you'll be surprised as to how many people don't check in with you or don't follow up with you, uh, especially if you're mentoring somebody or you're trying to. Um, a lot of people just tend to fall off and they, they weed themselves out. So if you seek mentorship, um, definitely, even if you just call them uh, and say, hey, I'm doing this, just to give you a heads up, I passed this class, I'm currently doing this and this, uh, these are the prerequisites for this step, so just, you know, just giving you a heads up, because a lot, a lot of people, once they get hired, they kind of get out of, they, they, they don't forget the process. So many things are changing right now in the fire service, when now, like, in the fire service, you have to take the state test uh, for your Firefighter One Academy, right? So, like, we, we didn't have that, so understanding that and say, yeah, you know, we're doing this, uh, but just wanted, to, just wanted to check in with you and say, hey, this is what I'm doing, and, and I'm still interested. I'm still right here, so don't forget about me. Uh, that definitely comes a long way when, when seeking out, but I'm telling you, at, at first, you don't think it's going to work, but I'm telling you, like, hands, ex first hand experience, Cold Call gave me my internship in Vacaville. I did 4896 with them. I spent my 480 hours, 480 hours, sign me off. Boom, you're done. You know? had the fastest internship yeah, I've I ever did. heard of. <laughs> 480 so hours. Fast. It was, yeah. I, I mean, I live with, I live with, I did 10 shifts with them, but at the same time, 10 tours is, it, it's like, it, it worked out, you know? It worked out. And that's because I cold called. And he actually went to my uh, graduation when I, when I graduated uh, Oakland Fire. But it's like, definitely, definitely reach out. And now, at the end, just get, grab my number. I'm a resource now. So definitely, and I'm sure everybody here would be okay with mm -hmm. grabbing our, our emails and, and, you know, check in with me, you know, check in with me, and, and it's, it's a long journey, but don't do it alone. Eric answered a lot of uh, good points um, about, you know, the networking, but um, I would just kind of piggyback off of what he said um, about, you know, when you put yourself out there, just, you know, not being afraid to uh, um, approach people in the fire service. like. Uh, it, it has been like a little, I guess a little while since I was hired. And like he said, the fire service has been changing and a lot of like the new generation, it's, it's kind of weird because I, I still feel like I, I, I'm young and cool and I relate to like, <laughs> like and then there's all these like, you know, these, these, you know, 25 year olds come in the department and they look at me as kind of like an older veteran and I'm like, hey, like, wait a sec here, you know, like, I'm still cool, you know, like. <laughs> It's just, it's just it, it is a little different, but like when, when we talk about, you know, the process, it, it, it's, it does sound a little foreign to me. So, um, and now I like, I kind of find myself in that, that mentor role. Like I'm the one who's getting like random calls and messages once in a while. Like some guy, like just, he sent me, he's like an acquaintance of mine and he's like a, a brother of, you know, a, an old friend of mine. He like randomly Facebook, Facebook messaged me when I was up 
at like 10.30 at night. And I, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm kind of tired and go to sleep. I ended up talking to the guy for like an hour, you know, like just, he just reached out, you know, I was like, okay, you know, you want to do this, you're serious about it, let's do it. You know, this is what, what you got to do, you know, and then when you got your, when you're done with your EMT and all this, then, then reach out again, you know, and we'll take the next step. So, you know, just like what he said, it is, you know, making that extra effort and not being afraid to approach somebody. Like we, we all remember like where we came from. And it is like extremely rewarding to give back and help, um, you know, people who are trying to go after that same dream. Like I, I remember, like, well, like I said, my journey, like that was the most fun journey. I mean, I, it was the best years of my life. Like I was coming over the bridge and I was like, man, like I had so many good times working here. And like all the people, even like so many of the people that I worked with here at Royal are also now firefighters, like Berkeley, Oakland, Alameda County, San Francisco. Like, I mean, I see these people all the time. We had this amazing network and that's what it was. It's like, oh, he, he knows somebody that knows somebody. Let me ask him. Like the same thing, like I, I got my clinicals probably through the same lady, Tracy. Yeah. Yeah, I got my, like same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracy, yeah, yeah. She got my clinicals. Yeah, she's like, oh. She's she just, she, re, she like heard, heard I needed something. She's like, hey, you want some help here? I can get you into Kaiser Oakland. I was like, cool. And she just got my name from somebody uh, who was another instructor at uh, uh, NCTI. And then same thing with my, uh, my preceptor. He, um, he's like, hey, there's this, someone told him, hey, there's this guy who really wants to get into fire. And uh, like someone uh, told him about me and he reached out. He gave me a random call at like eight o'clock at night. And I had been like having fun and drinking. This is me back when I was at Royal, like having a good time all the time party. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. I was, you know, I was, I, I was having a good time. You know, I was, uh, uh, you know, I had a little bit of a heat on and I was, yeah, feeling good. And he called me and he was like, I'm gonna, like, I got like three other guys that I'm gonna call. And I'm gonna ask you a couple random questions about uh, paramedicine and if, like whoever answers it the best is gonna get the internship. And I was I answered and he's like, I'll call you back. And he called me back at like 8.45. He's like, yeah, you got the internship, you know? And I was like, wow, that was cool. Like it was totally random. Like it was all the networking, like just putting yourself out there, making yourself known, like taking risks, you know? What have you got, what do you got to lose, you know? Like just, you know, build like, build that reputation of, well, this is a guy or, guy or gal who's not gonna stop until they reach their goals, you know? Like, um, that's the kind of, like, their people are gonna notice that. So um, just be resilient and not stop, like, do whatever you can. Um, and you'll never, when you get the badge, you'll never forget, you know, like, what everything you went through to, to get that. And it'll be that more, much more fulfilling. So being a probationary uh, firefighter, what it is, um, is that you're an at-will employee. So basically you can be let go at any time. You have your performance evals that you go through. We have uh, six quarters because, um, uh, you know, five months of my, of my probation was actually in an academy. So we have a task book. It covers 18 months and every month you have basically probably like 30 hours of sign-offs, whether there's certain types of like company evolutions or get, doing presentations, basically you research something and you're there in front of like a double house. So there's like eight people in front of you or seven people and you're giving a presentation, you're doing a PowerPoint and they're just ripping it apart. Mm -hmm. So learn to be like, so basically probation, um, not to digress. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty awkward all the time. Um, but basically it's, it's a time to, it's a, realistically, it's a time to really learn. It's a time, this is a brand new job. I'm no vet by any means. And anyone you talk to that's even had 30 years in, they're like, I barely know anything. But it's about, it's such a dynamic job and there's so many different like moving cogs on it that they try to break it down on a, on a way that you can learn different avenues in different ways. Um, so a lot of times, you know, being probationary, a lot of people kind of take that as a very negative connotation, but it's actually pretty cool. For one, it, it keeps you on point. Make sure that you're constantly 
learning and once you do get that badge that you aren't losing sight of actually what you want because you're still continuously trying to keep up to date on all the new technology and all these like different avenues of, of your job. Um, and so you do have an FTO that you report to. Uh, my FTO is at a different station. I call him once a week and we mostly, we both, mostly just talk about our families and whatnot. And he's like, hey, is everything going good? And it's like, yeah, I had this way crazy call. Like, hey, what do you think about a cat? And um, so it's, it's just a, it's, it's a time in your, your firefighting career where you have a little bit more oversight and you're a little bit more under the magnifying glass just because you're new. And then when a new class comes on, you know, there's a little bit of that heat that's generated from that magnifying glass. It's kind of a little bit more, you know, deflected on them. But it's, it's mostly a time for learning. Um, it's a time where you're, you're held accountable for, um, you know, a book that will help you teach more things about your job. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of what I've picked out from. I'm sure someone could probably give a... Do you have anything else to add to that, Derek? Because you have, what, you're probationary until October? That's right, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm on probation in Foster City. Um, basically, we have an 18-month probation process. Um, as you know, when you start as an entry-level firefighter on probation, you're learning all the tasks and requirements for the position of firefighter. Um, for Foster City and the majority of the departments on the peninsula, um, the driver operator portion is included in your probation. So they tack on another six months, 18 months total. Um, similar to what Miles was saying, there's a block test every three months uh, for 18 months, so six tests total. Um, and it's really just the time for you to sort of invest in yourself, really. Um, they sort of like are willing to meet you halfway, but you have to be willing to meet them at that point. You know, like, are you willing to come in with a plan, this is what I want to work on today, you know? And you're showing them, like, I'm willing to walk that walk, because in the interview, it's one thing to say that you are somebody of integrity and that you work hard. It's really, a, it's an opportunity for you to walk that walk and actually now show them. And it's gonna, it's, it's not a bad thing. I think it's, it's actually, you know, when you like get in the right framework, I mean, you're supposed to make mistakes. I mean, this is sort of like the basis of like any probationary firefighter, you're going through it, you're sort of learning as you go. Um, as a fire medic, as opposed to EMT, now you're responsible for your FTO time and you know, staying on top of your medicine as well. So coming in prepared, you know, like getting this experience here at Royal, getting it, uh, you know, your fire experience, if you guys, you know, bringing all that, you know, it helps. Um, cooking, if you guys are, are familiar with making some meals, I'm telling you right now, like as a probie, like, my captain told me one of my first shifts, he's like, you know what? When you're on probation, like you can make whatever you want, but you're not allowed to make the same meal twice. You know, that's a lot of meals, right? So it can be very, like, so these things start like adding a certain level of stress and you coming in prepared and just like knowing what it, like what's gonna be expected of you, it makes it so much more smoother and easier, not just for you, but for your crew as well. So if you guys like know some recipes, man, I'm telling you right now, like that, it, jump on it right now you know if you guys don't cook that much like i personally didn't had about five meals in my pocket i was like cool like i'm set you know what i mean <laughs> like you know what i mean so um when they throw you that curveball and i think maybe just one more thing too like you know we talk a lot about like getting in the right frame of mind um probation i think for me is it, it's really just about attitude and effort you know you're gonna have a lot of mistakes you know people are gonna maybe get on you about your your presentations or you, you're doing your uh your, your task book, but they're literally just trying to see how you handle it. You know, it's like, how do you come back and not quit and stay positive? You know, I mean, that's really all it is. I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing to passing probation and being successful and really anything you do is just keeping in the right frame of mind, staying positive and giving that 110%, you know, you'll, you'll have no problem. And the dovetail off that, it comes down to attitude. One of the things that he was talking about, which I was talking about and he touched on, was a whole presentation aspect and making mistakes. One of the things, yeah, they do look for, they want to kind of test to see how, you know, your, your ability to kind of handle criticism, but also at the same time, you're brand new, they have years on, and they're asking you about these certain things. They're like, okay, well, you know, tell me more about this. And you're like, oh, I don't know. They're like, well, let me tell you from my experience. And then that's, that's the criticism you're gonna get is more information because as we know it's everything's all always about just learning and trying to learn more about that specific thing that you're doing whether it's a presentation or you know your job in general 
they'll grill you, but then, you know, it's like that, that compliment sandwich, you know, but in reverse mostly. Oh, that wasn't very good. Hey, but dude, check this out. And yeah, it still sucked. So, um, but yeah, you, well articulated. Yeah, thank you. So I, I never really thought about being a career paramedic. Um, while, so while working at Paramex Plus, first there's a big difference, I think, between working for a private company and working now for a fire department, um, on a box at least. Um, when I was here in Alameda County working for Paramex Plus, there was 20, 30 year medics that are so salty. They are just angry, everything pisses them off, cut that out. Um, <laughs> before I went to San Francisco, I was kind of like in my mind like, God, am I going to be salty? Like, am I going to be just like angry for 12 hours sitting in this tiny little box office that smells kind of funny? Um, and But now that I'm over here with San Francisco Fire working as a paramedic, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm not salty at all and I don't plan on becoming that way and I'm hoping that the people that I work with and that I'm sitting right next to all day every day are going to be like, Hey, what are you so angry for? You know, yeah. let's go get coffee. Let's let's take a little break. Um, so I was a couple years ago. I was kind of hesitant and kind of kind of like, oh, shit, so should I go be a firefighter? Should I should I continue that path even though I don't really want to, just to not be angry? Um, but no, it's still not for me, and I'm I'm very happy where I'm at right now. I think it's a really great question. I mean, truthfully, I think everybody sort of has like an idea of what something is, and then when you actually get it, you're like, wow, I either really don't like this or it's even better. Um, for me, I feel like, you know, I, I had an idea of what this was gonna be, but it's so much better. I mean, I, I mean truthfully, I mean, I, 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 I'm just, I'm keeping it honest with you, like the schedule, I love the schedule that I work, I love the crews that I work with. I mean, I get to freaking ride the big red thing down the street, dude, like a little kid that never grew up, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, truthfully for me, like, I don't know, like, I think some people um, maybe lose sight of that a little bit, but, um, you know, no matter what, man, I mean, you have difficult days, like, you know, where you're running off no sleep and you're like, hey, man, this is what I signed up for, you know, and you got to really remember, like, hey, man, like, there's a lot of people that would really kill for the opportunity to be here right now, and uh, it's better, man. It, it, it really is. So I, I don't know. I think it's a, uh, it, you'll, you'll feel like your own personal satisfaction in knowing how hard you had to work to get there. And then on top of that, going through probation and earning the trust and the respect of your peers, and then uh, just enjoying it, man. Like, yeah, it's awesome. You, you quickly realize that you have a lot more responsibility than you thought you would, which sounds a little weird, but you, you quickly realize like, dang, like I just got off probation. Now I gotta find a house. Now I gotta find a crew who actually likes me. Now I gotta find the, in like now I'm gonna be driving the engine. Now I'm gonna be driving the truck and I'm gonna be telling you, and all of a sudden you find yourself, you and somebody else, on top of a burning building and you got a, you got a job to do. And then you gotta come back and you have to cook dinner. But somebody is a vegetarian and somebody doesn't eat fish. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, dang, like, I was, like, you quickly, real, like, it hits you. It hits you so hard and so quick and it's like, I have three, three and a half years in and everything I just told you was last Saturday. It's like, I can't, it, it, it's, it, it's crazy, but at the same time, I love it. It's like, it's that responsibility and having, having to do that, it's like, it's one of the best feelings of knowing that you're responsible for yourself and you're for your crew and making sure that everybody eats on time, you know, making sure that everybody stays together, making sure that everybody comes back and, hey, do we have all our tools? Okay, what, and then you come back and the engine and chug, everybody, everybody, everybody cleans everything together. It's one of the best feelings. And then in the morning you leave and you're like, did we just do that yesterday? <laughs> like, did, did that just really happen? And you go home and you're excited and you're oh, super energy and, and then everybody's like, boo. And it's like, hey, I just, like, let me tell you about my day. And, and nobody's really, everybody's still sleeping. So, but yeah, it's, it's 10 times better than what it is. Everything, you, it, you will get whatever you want as much as you put in. You will get whatever you want. Yeah, I absolutely agree with what everyone has been saying uh, up here. Like that has been my experience so far. Um, I definitely underestimated the, the physical and emotional um, toll that the job would have on me. Like uh, I'm 33, 
I've broken like eight bones already just in like my time in the fire service. Um, I hurt. I feel like I'm like closer to 50, to be honest. Like, um, well, you fell, but, right? You had yeah, like a three-story yeah, I got, collapse. Yeah, I got hurt pretty bad. But, you know, like going through all that adversity and um, learning how to deal with your emotions and um, just the crazy stresses of the job just makes you appreciate it that much more. Like, I, I, every day I'm like, okay, like, I don't want to work out. But no, I should, you know, because, like, we're going to get that fire tomorrow or the next day, and I'm not going to be able to hang. And then I got guys who are, like, 17, 18 years older than me, and I can't hang with them on the stairs, you know, like, up to the 10th floor. It's like, holy crap, like, I have to be on my game. Um, I have to show up to my job um, being 100%, 100% of the time. Like, there's no, like, room for not being 100%, like something bad could happen. You have a responsibility to yourself, your crew, your family, to do everything you need to do or have to do to make it home, you know, and let your brothers and sisters make it home too. But uh, aside from all that added responsibility that I was not ready for, maybe I wasn't mature enough, like I, I couldn't think of doing anything else. Like it is the greatest job in the world um, every day I wake up, I'm smiling, I'm thankful that I get to do it. I come to work with a smile on my face, I'm happy, like I, I walk in, like I don't know what's going to happen, like I could be working in my regular position or sent down the street to drive one of the busier engines in the department or tiller a truck across town, like anything could happen any given moment and it's so exciting to just know that you you're able to do that and uh and it's even more exciting to know that you can handle that responsibility because you know you're prepared um and everything you've done to that point uh has been in preparation of that even this job here like you know handling patients and working through stressful situations as a team like all of that like comes into play and um yeah there's just nothing like it i mean uh Every day I feel like I'm brand new still, and I don't want that to ever go away. Like, I do feel like that kid in the big red truck, you know, like ringing the bell, driving down the street, and I'm like, oh wait, like I am a firefighter. <laughs> and I'm like waving at these little kids, and I'm like, that was me, like, that was me, like, literally. And it's like, yeah, I'm still that kid, you know? I just get to drive it, so awesome. it's cool. Thank you, and Miles? Yeah, it's really hard to go last on this because there's been so many just clutch points and um, I'll just kind of reiterate um, when I got into doing fire, you know, with my house, uh, seeing it on fire and seeing firefighters go in, it was like one of those things where you're like, oh, that's the job. You pull a hose and you spray water and then go back to the station, and go sleep or eat or whatever, but it is whatever they, they do. And then, uh, you know, watching a lot of these are probably kind of a little too old for some of you, but like Backdraft with Kurt Russell, like all time favorite, right? And seeing that and you're like, oh yeah, it's totally awesome. And then it's like the, re the real world thing where you, you finally get hired and you're there. And you know, it's like mostly, it's like kind of, you really have to go outside your, your comfort zone with a lot of things. But once you actually do find yourself resonating with a crew, with a house, with a district, um, it's so rad. You know, and I've had shifts that are, you know, my typical shifts are 48 hours long. Uh, they go by like that. You know, you, you go from, you know, getting a structure fire where you just literally were in the belly of the beast to having a crazy car accident to just assisting someone up off the floor into a wheelchair and just, and then, you know, two hours later you're in bed, you get toned out and then it's like you're standing there looking at some wires waiting for pg and &E to come out. And it's literally, it's the most bizarre job I could ever dreamed of because it's literally not just pulling hose. It's not this, it's the living with the different dynamics of, of people and men and women. And also one of the things I've really started to, uh, to understand with the diversity in our department, everyone likes to do other stuff. So now I find myself doing other things I don't know, like other hobbies that I didn't really do as much or never did with people I never would have known I would have even hung out with. So it really offers you a lot of opportunity to just to grow with a crew, to grow with 
in your community, but also grow within in yourself. And the quality of life I had and my overall happiness has really exponentially grown. Um, it's fun. It's the, but also at the same time, just as uh, they touched on, the level of responsibility is borderline almost overwhelming. At times I'm the solo medic on the crew, and it's you know you get up on scene, and you're like. I really wish I had a, you know, but you do have a sec couple second pairs of eyes, but you're like, I really wish I had someone else kind of holding my hand right now. <laughs> uh, but you just, you learn to grow up and be an adult, an adult quicker. And um, it's, it, it's so worth it. It continues to be worth it. And it's still that, I don't, I don't know of any other job I could ever do at this point. I, I could not be in a, stuck in an office. I couldn't be, you know, being my tax preparer, I'd, I'd lose my mind. Like this is literally, this is everything I've ever wanted. And it's, it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing journey and it's, it's worth it.